Hey, how's it going? So the purpose of this video is to give you a primer of the MEOIs. So this is going to be a rapid review and it's going to have a high level overview where I fly through things and I don't define anything with the purpose of helping you organize the information so that we can go through it much slower and more detail. So don't feel like you have to memorize all this stuff. Maybe just view it as the spark notes for the details that are to come later. And I'm going to take a lot of this stuff from a Carlat report article which I think you can argue is probably the most practical resource available for psychiatry, and I highly recommend it. So the MAOIs are an antidepressant medication, and they're particularly beneficial for patients with atypical depression, social anxiety disorder, and treatment-resistant depression. And there's been a significant decline in MAOI use over time. And this is because of the introduction of newer antidepressants, and because of the fear of the MAOI's interactions with food and with certain medications. A lot of experts feel that this decline is really unfortunate because these are great medications and the medication and food restrictions aren't as severe as is commonly taught. But regardless, these are medications with higher risks than the more conventional options we use today, which leaves them reserved for treatment resistant cases. So who's a good candidate for an MAOI? A good candidate would be a patient who's failed several trials for depression or atypical depression or panic disorder, or social anxiety disorder. So the MAOIs are best well known for being treatment-resistant depression medications. And the usual definition of this is a failure of two antidepressants that have been taken for an adequate amount of time and at an adequate dose. So the mechanism of action of these drugs is that they block the MAO enzyme. And this enzyme is responsible for breaking down basically all the major neurotransmitters that are involved in depression. So they work by raising the levels of serotonin and dopamine and norepinephrine. And there are a few different MAOIs. The quote-unquote classic MAOIs, which are the older medications, are tranalcipramine, isocarboxazid, and phenylzine. The mnemonic here is TIP. So the TIP MAOIs are what we call irreversible and non-selective. And they're called non-selective because there are two different MAO enzymes, MAOA and MAOB, and these medications block both of them. The other MAOI that we see used in psychiatry is selegiline, which is available as a patch called the MSAM patch. At low doses, this medication is selective for MAOB, and at higher doses, it's unselective. So it's believed that it's the MAOA enzyme that needs to be blocked in order for the MAOIs to work in depression. And then the transdermal patch is called MSAM, and it's pretty nifty in that at lower doses, you don't need to follow the tyramine diet. But moving on, how effective are these medications? So a lot of experts consider the MAOIs to be some of the most effective medications that we have for treatment-resistant cases. There was a meta-analysis in 2006 that concluded that the older MAOIs, the TIP ones, might be more effective than the TCAs, especially in atypical depression. And in another study, Patients who failed to respond to at least two TCAs had a 50% response with tranalcipramine, which is pretty high. And there have been some decent studies that have shown that these medications are effective for social anxiety disorder and dysthymic disorder. And then there's just some data that suggests that they're beneficial in panic disorder, PTSD, and maybe even bulimia. But the reasons these medications tend to not be used first line is because of their adverse effects, most notably the food interactions and the drug interactions. So the food interactions lead to a requirement for patients to follow the tyramine restrictive diet because of fear of what's called the cheese reaction. And then the two big scary things for the drug interactions are a hypertensive crisis and serotonin syndrome. So it's super important that for all patients starting an MOI that they're well educated on a few things. It's super crucial that they understand the important drug interactions that occur with the meds. They need to be educated on the different food interactions. And this can be pretty confusing for patients because the dietary restrictions used to be very restrictive in the older days, and now we don't think of the dietary restrictions as as restrictive, but it still can be pretty hard to find trustworthy information in regards to how much tyramine is actually in foods. And then for the patients, it's super important to stress to them the importance of notifying other healthcare professionals that they're taking these medications. All right, moving on, what's the best MAOI to use? So typically, tranalcipramine and phenylzine are considered their first-line choice, especially for the classic MAOI class. So phenylzine might have some GABA activity, which helps me remember that it's a little bit better for anxiety. And then tranalcipramine is structurally similar to an amphetamine, which helps me remember that it's probably best for lethargic and melancholic symptoms of depression. And also helps me remember that phenylzine is more sedating 
And then Trainal Super Mean probably has worse insomnia. But these are just little rules of thumb. I don't really have time here to go into all the differences. And then there's the transdermal selegiline patch, the MSAM patch. So this med has a favorable side effect profile, and it's probably less likely to cause the tyramine food reactions. So compared to, say, phenylzine, causes a lot less weight gain and less sexual dysfunction, but it might not be as effective in depression. Now, looking at the side effects specific to the MAOIs, orthostatic hypotension can be problematic, which a lot of people might miss because they think of hypertension when they think of the MAOIs. But the hypertension is a result of the medication and food interactions. It's actually orthostatic hypotension that occurs with these medications. And the other side effect worth knowing is that it can cause pretty bad insomnia. So the overall summary of these medications is that in treatment-resistant cases, MAOIs are definitely worth considering. Particularly in atypical depression, MAOIs have a unique distinction as being more effective than any other class of medications. And these medications aren't as complicated as the reputation suggests. So these are reasonably well-tolerated drugs, and the lore that the dietary and drug restrictions are something that will completely change a patient's life probably isn't well-deserved, because these restrictions aren't as burdensome for most patients who take them. Now, if you want to learn more about the MAOIs separate from these videos, I definitely recommend checking out Dr. Ken Gilman's work. He has a blog called Psychotropical.com. He's considered an expert on MAOIs and serotonin syndrome. Now, I've learned a ton from Dr. Gilman. I should warn you, his writing is quite ornery, and I do think he can minimize the downsides of the MAOIs. But this might stem from the fact that he treats much sicker patients than we see today. So I don't necessarily agree with absolutely everything he writes, but I still have learned a ton from him, um, and he's a really nice and kooky guy. And if you're considering ever prescribing these medications or you want to learn more, I feel like his material is required reading. And he's put together a really nice prescriber's guide to using the classic MAOIs in treatment-resistant depression. Hello, I am the creator of Psychopharm. I'm here today to announce the Psychopharm Antidepressant Psychopharmacology course. I've put what can only be described as a stupid amount of time into making this course. I learned a new software so that the graphics are nice and clean. Um, I've put all my free time into making these videos. I'm covering a lot in this course. It's going to go over kind of the basics of treating depression. It's going to go over the SSRIs, the SNRIs, the MAOIs, the TCAs, and some of the atypical antidepressants. I really appreciate all the support. If you can share this with people who you think would be interested in this course, I would really appreciate it. If this goes okay, then I can justify continuing to spend so much time on making this stuff, and I hope to eventually move to an antipsychotic course, a mood stabilizer course. Um, I have a lot of ideas, I just need to justify using all this time on these projects. Thank you for watching, thank you for considering, um, have a good day.